Okay, at first glance, this question looks like you're going to have to kind of think about what choice sounds best. And, and maybe you can do that and get the right answer. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, except it's not as predictable as memorizing the rule that matters for this question. So there is a rule. And if you've been practicing for a while, you might recognize this sentence structure starts with this non-underlined portion, which is a modifier. Basically, it's like a little description that's going to lead into the sentence. And when we have modifiers, it's very important that whatever we're talking about has to be the first thing after that comma because we are modifying something, right? We need to lead into the thing we're talking about. So the way I apply the grammar rule here is I just kind of turn the first thing into a question. So in this case, it says on the verge of giving up. So who was on the verge of giving up? That would be my question. And the first thing after this comma has to answer that question. So who? Well, Giesel, okay, fine. So that's choice A. That seems to match. An image? No, that's not right. An image isn't going to give up. There's Jesel again, that sounds pretty good. And D, the story, nope, that can't, a story can't give up. So we have two choices right now that seem to follow the grammar rule. But if we truly know the grammar rule, it's actually only one. Choice C is the only one that works here because it is actually following the comma with this person. Choice A looks like it is, but this apostrophe causes a problem. It's not actually Giesel, Giesel, however you say it, that we're talking about. It's his story that we're talking about, right? So this is actually the same problem as choice D. It's not following the comma with the right thing. The person is actually kind of like an adjective here that's describing the real topic of the sentence in choice A which is the story. We want the topic to be Jesel himself because that's what the modifier is talking about. So notice, we didn't even look at anything that came after that. We could read it just to be safe, but it's, it's really just about the, the modifier rule turning something that seems like a style question, which choice sounds best. It turns it back into a grammar question where there's just simple little tests that we can apply to guarantee that we get the right answer. That's why memorizing rules is so important. It can make a lot of these weird questions really straightforward very quickly. You want to have formulas and rules that you apply. It makes this writing section much more like the math than the reading.